Hello. Hi. Uh, so I was at Half Price Books mm. the other day. I love Half Price. I was, of course, perusing the history section. Oh, yeah. I go for the the sci-fi fantasy section, mm -hmm. and I literally just scan for female authors, and mm. I just start there. Not a bad method. Uh, not. <laughs> get rid of a lot of the gross shit. So I took a few pictures of titles that I thought were funny slash bad. Okay. It's very anti-communist, obviously. <laughs> I can't wait. Uh, and so I'll show you these, these pictures here. First one, Lenin, giant text, the man, the dictator, and the master of terror. There you go. <laughs> and it's like in red with big block white letters. So. Yeah, <laughs> like you could spot that book a mile away. I love that one. The master of terror. <laughs> master of terror. You, okay, two beef. No, that was Stalin. We were talking about like they did. I guess Lenin did too. You did say they he, used terror. Le, yeah, he 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 said tell them about the terror, you mm -hmm. know, to the press and everything. Like we would do it again, basically. He would not shrug at that, I guess. But to a Western audience, I yeah. found it perfect. The dictator. <laughs> what a jerk! All right, next one. Cogs in the wheel. The formation of Soviet man. <laughs> Lovely. Cogs in the wheel. That's all they were. Wow. 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 At first I was like, oh, maybe this will be about like some sort of workers movement in the States. Nope. <laughs> or like early industrial stuff. Nope. No, nope. This is just bleak, bad <laughs> Soviet Union people. Ugh. Here's the next one. Fidel, Hollywood's favorite tyrant. <laughs> I was not aware. It was written by... An ex-Cuban? Yeah. Yeah. And saying like, oh, how bad he is, you know. And, but Hollywood likes him what? because they're bad. I've never heard that Hollywood likes him. I mean, they don't. But <laughs> I've never seen like a positive movie portrayal of Fidel Castro or anything. Well, well Che was not. Che was a sympathetic mm. uh, movie. For, okay. And the biopics are not really that bad Okay. about the Cuban revolution. So maybe that's what they're going mm. for. I just... What the fuck? <laughs> it's very stupid. This Tyrant. one is just objectively bad. Okay, great. The label covers it a little bit, but the first word of the title is Vietnam. Okay. Vietnam, the necessary war, a reinterpretation of America's most disastrous military conflict. And the image is... Like a map of Vietnam with like a, the like a Soviet hammer and like a very ominous red glow <laughs> around it. Yeah, I, I like that one. Wow. I didn't read much about the because I, I didn't care that much I about this person's <laughs> the thesis interpretation. <laughs> like I I know guys, I know it looks like we really fucked this one up. <laughs> yeah, but it was kind of like if we didn't do it, you know, the communists would expand. <laughs> that sort of thing. So of course you've got to go and burn down a country mm -hmm, to, to stop mm -hmm. that it became Stealing necessary it. to destroy vietnam to save it obviously <laughs> uh and then this one i saw today this was not a half price books mm. but i guess as of recording time this past weekend a little graphic in the wall street journal <laughs> it's not super substantive but it's just kind of stupid <laughs> oh my god Oh my god. Who's on the... Is that Vlad on the... On the left? Left? That's Vlad the Impaler? No, that is uh, Peter the Great. Okay, so you've got Peter the Great, half of his face. On the right side of the image, you have half of Stalin's face. And poking through the middle is Putin's face. What the <laughs> fuck? So, oh. Stalin equals Putin equals Peter the Great. <laughs> sure, yeah. The headline of this... I probably opinion piece, I don't really know, says, how far do Putin's imperial ambitions go? Okay. Which, again, to just to clarify, are equal to Stalin's imperial ambitions and Peter the Great, a czar. <laughs> I mean, I don't see a lot of articles about how far do the United States imperial ambitions go, but, you know, whatever, it's fine. It's because we're not an empire, we're a democracy. No, we're not. Any of, <laughs> we're, no, incorrect. Well, let's, let's get into our feelings about that. Uh, yeah, welcome to another shoot in the shit. We've got a lot of shit to shoot here. We figured, you know, you guys might want another one of these here and there. 
it's not our main thing. It's not our main beat, but a lot went on this past week. <laughs> a lot. A lot. Mainly one big thing, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Everyone was like very, I don't know, taken aback by it and everything with the row decision. We knew about it. That's one of the big things, right? Is didn't we, we know? We knew. Yeah. And I think it's just like where we are as a media, like in what's the word? Soaked nation. Mm -hmm. That it is kind of easy to forget. Like I was like, Oh, yeah, we did already hear about this. Yeah, the cycle keeps going too fast. Mm hmm Like, we were already on to, like, Uvalde, and we were already on to, like, other things. Yeah. So. So we kind of had moved on. But, like, to me, it was also kind of like a helplessness. Like, we knew about it. Mm-hmm. Nobody did anything about there it. There was, you know, the leak of, like, oh, here's what they're probably going to... It was like a draft or something, yes, right? Yes, yes. Like, maybe it could change, or... Maybe they just won't do it. Like, they kept dragging it out, too. And it's like, oh, you know, maybe we'll release it tomorrow. Oh, no, we're going to add another day. And I, I feel like everyone, like, did this stupid sort of, like, hope that it wouldn't happen. Stupid hope. Like, just put your head in the sand and, like, may maybe it's going to go away and they'll forget and this bad thing won't happen. And then we all were like, no, nah, never mind it. <laughs> yeah. And, and they're just like, oh, no, like, let down by that? I don't know. Yeah, I, I think... I was also struck by the fact that, like, we knew this was happening, and, like, in a way, it was, I mean, I guess a little bit useful for our project, because everyone got to see how, like, nobody did anything about it, like, and, like, these fucking hilariously just out-of-touch responses from, like, the mainstream Democrats of just, like, we're gonna hold a committee in a month, and it's like, you knew about this six months ago, so, like, what are you fucking doing, or however many months ago? Yeah, and... <laughs> to clarify, you know, when you say it's useful for... It's it's still a bad thing. We it's both, a bad thing. I terrible. wish they had done something. But, yeah. like, I think we knew they weren't going to. Yeah. And now everybody else knows. They just, like, refuse to do anything useful. Mm -hmm. And they're sending out fucking garish fundraiser emails and just saying, oh, now we can vote on it. And I'm like, in what way? Mm -hmm. <laughs> in what fucking way? And, like, Pelosi just campaigned for some, like, pro-life guy... Cuellar down in Texas. Right? Was it in Texas? Yeah. I Henry didn't... Cuellar against uh, Cisneros. I only saw it on Twitter and did not read the news. Well, I mean, there could have been others. It's not like the Democratic <laughs> Party is that unwelcoming to. I know. But... <laughs> so, yeah, it's. I mean, it's a terrible ruling. Mm-hmm. They're just like, no, we're not doing that. Like, it, it doesn't apply. It was a bad decision. We're taking that part out. It's terrible on its own, but then they also were, like, implying they were going to go look at other shit, too. Around, yeah, did you like, see about marriage. that? Yeah, uh, so Clarence Thomas mm -hmm. was like, oh, well, let's also take a look at Augerfell. Is it Aug How do you... Obergefell? Yes, maybe? there's a lot of consonants in there. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, there's some other ones, too, but, like, oof, that's rough. Lawrence versus Texas and mm. Griswold Which one's versus Griswold? Connecticut. Which one's that? These are bizarre rulings, too discuss overturning <laughs> but um basically what he was saying is roe the, the the big advance that it made was saying there are implied rights in the constitution so now we're saying no rights except for the ones explicitly codified yeah and the constitution has to get nerdy about it um we should preface this or bookend this by saying like Our constitution sucks yeah the constitution sucks we should have something else we should rewrite it's it each the, generation. It's one of the um, oldest ones, like, still around, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. ridiculous to have this same old constitution. We should... Don't hold it, you know, don't be like, well, that's the only rights I could possibly get are the ones in the constitution. But playing by their own rules, right? <laughs> Assuming that, the constitution has always had this tension between the Ninth and the Tenth Amendments. Ninth Amendment just says, hey, we didn't list all the rights in the Bill of Rights. We yeah. didn't have time. You probably have some other rights besides this. Just because it's not listed doesn't mean that you don't have that right. Okay, that seems important. Tenth Amendment says, and it's sort of the opposite, is that it says uh, anything we didn't list here, any powers Six. not enumerated or rights not enumerated, rights not enumerated uh, belong to the people or the states. See, that sucks. Um, and that's that's basically, that was the federalism side of it. It's like, 
leave the rest of it up to the states. And so those two kind of like butt heads a little bit. They do, yeah. And the Supreme Court <laughs> said basically, well, we're going with the uh, we're going with the tent. <laughs> we're going with the shitty one uh, um, that turns us into little kingdoms. And the problem with that, in terms of like these other cases you were talking about with Clarence Thomas, is he said, well, okay, Roe said there are these implied rights. And so all these other cases say, well, there are implied rights to I mean, other the right, things. The right to privacy is an implied right. Yeah, and that's like, that's gone. <laughs> yeah, that's what that that's part of Roe as well. But those other cases, o Obergefell, we know, is the marriage equality case, mm -hmm. right? That built off of this, you know, right to for people to that, that's that's implied, right? Mm -hmm. That they that they have this. The other cases are quite wild. So Lawrence versus Texas. Is that a healthcare one? No, that one is uh, against the old, what they called the sodomy, sodomy. laws. <gasps> oh. Um, they, I don't recall how it happens, but police go into someone's house there in the act and they get charged under the laws and they challenge it and said, if you outlaw homosexual acts, you're outlawing it without outlawing it, right? So. You're saying, oh, it's okay to be gay. You just can't do any of the gay things. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah and, and so that was a way to get around mm -hmm. outlawing being gay. Yeah. And they said, you can't do that. And now Clarence Thompson is saying, well, what maybe we you can. Could? Maybe it's you insane. can outlaw that sort of behavior without, oh. yeah. That's Lawrence v. Texas. The other one, Griswold, is about contraception. Jesus Christ, y'all. And that was the one that said in the narrow sense and then we kind of broaden it to just be everybody but it was a case of like a married couple even mm -hmm. getting contraception and in connecticut had said you can't, or i don't I forget if it was like a town or what mm -hmm. but they were like no you can't and they were like this is that's fucked up you can you have the right to do that yeah that is also maybe challengeable what the fuck guys this is full on. I mean, like, I think it's very ironic we just did episodes about fascism and democracy because, wow, we're like failing on, we're doing great at fascism, <laughs> doing pretty bad at democracy. What the fuck? Yeah. Uh, I don't know if I would go so far as to say fascism yet. They're, they haven't really done any of the kind of fascist thing, fascistic, maybe. They're doing a lot of social crackdowns, which I think kind of goes with it. In what way? I mean, in coming after like women and like queer people and sex and stuff like that, that seems pretty fash to me. So they're saying they're going after marginalized groups. So what they're going to do is open the door because right now they're they're not they are going after them in in reality, mm -hmm. or rather the states are. But the Supreme Court, I guess, is opening the door for that to happen. They're saying, oh, for sure, open season, go ahead. You know, and, and a lot of these states, we're laws. in one, yeah. Texas had uh, a trigger law basically roaring ready to go as soon as it happens. Yeah, so basically a trigger law is like they had on the books, um, Texas including this, a lot of other states, I think 23 yeah. the other states or something. And a this, lot is, of states. this is very useful for, A, people who are not following, <laughs> following <laughs> um, like this as it unfolds in America, but also to you guys out there in other countries. Yes, let's explain our stupid laws. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, uh, Texas has a trigger law, which just means that like they wrote a law that says if Roe gets overturned, these restrictions will go into place immediately or pretty much immediately. It varies by state, but I mm -hmm. think Texas was like pretty much like right the now. Day, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's already in effect basically. Yeah, and um, a lot of these are like real fucked up like bounty hunter style laws of like if you turn someone in, you get $10,000 or like shit like that. Like it's fucking nuts. Well, that was before. I mean, because... The idea with the trigger law was just to change the law. The bounty hunter thing, I thought, was just like before they had done oh, away really? with Roe. It was like you could, I don't know. I, it, I, you get, it's, I get those confused, but yeah, the, they're all confusing. <laughs> they're all bad. Too. They're all bad. That's, <laughs> okay, so they're opening the door. They know what's going to happen. They they didn't do this in like a pure academic lab setting of yeah. like, well, we should be trying to try to be pure about the constitution. Like they know the political. And ramifications and the ramifications on like people. See, I don't think America anymore has a coherent enough structure nationwide mm -hmm. to do fascism as a country. Like we could like break up and do fascist states and non-fascist states. Maybe, yeah, maybe that's a good point. 
you have you know you have completely different you have got new york california washington oregon maine you, vermont you, yeah, yeah. You've, you've got like different i don't know totally different ideas of how to do it versus your reactionary mm-hmm. you know proto-fascist type ones the ones that would actually that, that have the trigger laws that are like hell yeah we've been waiting <laughs> for this yeah so yeah maybe it is less of a unified fascist state more of a crumbling into many fascist fiefdoms yeah because it's it's really stupid like <laughs> can't emphasize how stupid this is yeah it would proje- and and trying to do a little bit of bullshit predicting about like where does that lead mm-hmm. reading this re- reading the row ruling as like going forward if that trend line continues Mm -hmm. what do you get to me it seems like you get you may keep like the united states you probably do because everyone's like very averse to change it's Mm -hmm. like you know we don't have new like countries very much well yeah or we don't have new there's a lot of things tied in like we don't have new decades of like styles and shit everything's the same since like the 2000s Mm, yeah, yeah you don't institutions really don't change in here anymore dying empire i guess but it's hard to see them just saying let's not do the united states anymore like they'll probably have that but just like uh, you know um, not internal borders really but like Like things really change when you go from state to state like drastically like a confederacy more almost yeah federation or something yeah where they're all really doing their own thing (sighs) Because, I mean, that when you start leaning more and more on the Tenth Amendment, you're more saying, states, y'all do what do you want. Do whatever the fuck you want. And that's kind of where it leads. And, you know, the details of that get too hard to predict, but... Yeah, and, like, uh, exactly, because I was immediately thinking, like, well, everyone... Well, like, not everyone, but people will probably try to move, and, like, it's just... Ugh, it's going to be so gross, and... It's bad. It's bad. Yeah. Yeah. I guess if you're listening, you may be like frustrated at people you talk to online about this or takes you encounter online about this, but also maybe like people you talk to in real life. Mm -hmm. What do you do? How do you talk to them or defend your position or whatnot? Like, have you run into any of that? I run into a lot of misinformed people Mm -hmm. and like people who like even are still pro-choice, but they don't understand like the intensity behind it. Like, let's talk about ectopic pregnancies. Okay. Um, I mentioned this to, like, my husband, and he didn't know about it. Okay. It's when, like, your pregnancy goes wrong. The baby's growing on, like, the outside of where it's supposed to be. Um, it is a guaranteed failure to carry. Like, it's it's going to not work, and it's also going to kill you. Okay, so they never just miscarry or something in that way? Um, I don't really know. I'm not a gynecologist. I don't know that stuff. I'm Whatever. not sure. Obstetrician um, is the other one. I think it can still grow. So, like, okay. if it's left to just grow, it'll fucking kill you. Yeah. You have to get an abortion for that. Yeah. And, like, laws vary in these states over, like, what exceptions are made. You know, like, the classic rape and incest kind of exceptions. That's not everywhere. Life of the mother. Life of the mother exceptions aren't everywhere. All of these vary by state. And, like, these are just such common problems. Oh, what was that stat I read? Hold on. Pregnancy is 30 times more dangerous than abortion. Most people who have babies will have a miscarriage or an issue in their pregnancy. Like, it's just a thing that happens. Mm -hmm. It's extremely common. And with these laws, there's no physical way to tell the difference between a miscarriage and an abortion. There's just not. Because an abortion is just a forced miscarriage. Yeah. Um, especially with the kinds of like abortion pills we have now that just basically trigger a miscarriage like it's just medically impossible to tell yeah also if you go to a doctor you can just lie to them and say that you had a miscarriage if you took a pill and you don't want them to know that's fine it will not affect treatment as far as i know yeah do some googling but i read something else that was like period trackers could period trackers yeah you know because law enforcement can like easily get their hands on anything because Mm -hmm. all the all the data companies are just like, please buy our stuff, you know? Yeah, yeah. So period tracker apps, um, people are recommending that you delete that because, yeah, they could use that to figure out, oh, this person missed their period and then traveled out of state. Yeah. Or, you know, was out sick for a week or mm-hmm. whatever it is. 
So I guess like there's a lot of nuance and there's a lot of like, I think people do a lot of hand wringing whenever they say like, well, I'm pro-choice, but like nobody wants an abortion and it's really sure. bad. And I think it should only happen in like X, Y, Z cases. And it should just be like, we can't do that because then you're going to have like so much hedging and hemming and hawing that at the end you're going to have all these like shitty like rules around it like it should just be like i don't want to be good enough come on and over you know like that's it yeah um i see your face <laughs> 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 because okay often people are like well just get on birth control birth control doesn't work for everybody sure yeah of course birth control doesn't work for everybody you could have hormonal issues and that means you only can use like a copper iud and even those don't work for some people also they can be unpleasant um and hard to get and expensive etc cetera, etc cetera. there is too much room for error in in over legislating abortion like it needs to be really simple i mean ideally yeah also getting birth control should be really simple yeah so i think when people say oh you don't want to see an abortion or what you know you don't want yeah. that to happen or things like that a lot of what they mean the most so I, I don't know people vary maybe yeah but i think a charitable reading of that is like i don't want someone to get up to like the door which i'm sure this rarely happens but like the doors of pregnancy of something that's not going to go wrong for anybody but like they would struggle with having that child in their situation and then they have an abortion or whatever you know like Wait, what? Like, they're very close to the you know, third trimester, oh, whatever you're talking so about. Oh, that's so rare. That's what I'm saying. It's rare. But that's what people think of, I think, when, when they, they think, think of, of abortion. abortions. Or, and they'll say, well, it's very reasonable to do it very early on or whatever. But they get more and more squeamish when it gets closer to, like, it being... A re and then they are imagining, essentially, an opportune, you know, health-wise, everything's fine. It's just the situation of the mother and the child afterward that would be bad and so they get, would get an abortion. That's also fine. I would argue that you, while you wouldn't want to criminalize that, you know, th these these pro-life people don't give a damn what happens to someone after exactly. the baby has exited, you know, and been born into the world. They don't care anything about that. And you could make people a lot more comfortable with having a child. If you fucking provided for them. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, I know people who have put off having kids because they're they're not financially stable. Like, that's a thing that happens. And at the end of the day, if you don't want to have a kid, you don't want to have a kid. Like, some people just, like, don't. And like, I, think, I think the extreme view that people get, like, when they say no one wants to have an abortion is, like, well, you shouldn't use it as a form of birth control. Yeah, you shouldn't. That would fucking suck. Like, mm -hmm. no one wants to do that. We're not, that's not what we're talking about. Yeah. But, like, the response has been to make these laws have, you know, affect earlier and earlier to where you won't even know if you're fucking pregnant. And also to, apparently, clamp down on birth control. So, you're like, you're giving us very few options. Like, I've been thinking a lot about that Mark's bit where he talked. That's not a bit. Like, he's a comedian. <laughs> <laughs> you guys ever heard yeah, of that was a That was a banger, that one line. <laughs> What is up with pregnancy? <laughs> <laughs> but that, that quote, I, I didn't want to say quote because then I'd have to quote it, but that phrase or passage where he talks about like women being like slaves to a system because they're, they're trapped in this like situation of for forced birth. And I think about that a lot. Obviously, Mark use, Mark's used the term women. Anyone can have a baby. But it's it's what i've been thinking about a lot is like it feels like that's the real goal is to get everyone back to nuclear family and like pushing out babies for workers yeah the workers angle is probably correct you know that they want uh, someone said it one of them said it or something oh yeah the alito i thought yeah for that was for a that was in the oral questionings or something or a pool for adoption yeah or like basically said the workforce mm -hmm. right so i mean that angle is there for sure I, uh -huh. I honestly think that's what I don't think like I, I don't think you can reason your way through to some of these folks I think the real goal is like they want quote-unquote traditional values yeah yes there there are people who are kind of lost on the issue and won't be won't really they're just incorrect about it yeah um, but there are people who I think don't know about those things that we just talked about yeah and you could emphasize like hey there are better ways to reduce something than criminalizing it mm -hmm. i mean these guys got just got done saying we don't need to be 
passing stricter gun laws, <laughs> you know, we, we or whatever. Criminalizing it doesn't work in that sense or you know we'll say something like that about like drugs or whatever. yeah for sure um and it's like well how do we solve these problems you solve the roots of them and it's like well okay if people had free universal like easy to go to and everything health care mm-hmm. you know, we say access that's a stupid nope. term but like i mean if you're if you're talking free health care you also do need to talk about like getting people to health care in that sense of access yeah, yeah. you know but free health care that they could act you know, that they, they could go to really easily repeatedly mm-hmm. so that they would know about their pre- pregnancy very early on mm-hmm. you know if they had economic security so that they didn't have to work three four jobs so that they didn't have time to go see if they were pregnant or whatnot mm-hmm. um or you know free t- completely free birth control in all the different spectrums of whatever you want to use then such a robust you know, welfare state or, you know, popular in the, in the dream world, like, a, you know, a people's <laughs> democracy with everything provided for you so that you, you know, felt like you were secure, like you had a state that would, or a commune that would help you to raise a child or to that give too. a child up to someone who wanted it or whatever. It's you a felt pre comfortable and post care thing. Yeah. But, you know, to, to say, we're going to criminalize you if you don't put yourself through all the risks and pay for all this care that you still may die in it oh Uh, yeah pregnancy is so fucking expensive and then bring it bring to birth this kid that you're gonna like be saddled with in this barbaric world of ours destitute yeah with no support like that's just (sighs) it's insane there are a lot yeah there are a lot more humane ways for uh the person giving birth and the fetus than child or whatever there's a lot more humane ways to approach it for sure but like none of those options are being given yeah that's (laughs) just that's off the table that's beyond the pale i forget which it's some sort of philosophy maybe it was zizek or one of those guys said about like apocalyptic media and stuff that Mm. it's that it's easier to imagine the end of the world than to imagine capitalism ending Honestly, and yeah. It's the same here. It's easier to imagine all these barbaric ways to, you know, put the yoke on people and force them to give birth than it is to imagine a society where people would like, I don't know, want to have children mm-hmm. in, <laughs> or, uh, you know, or be able to take care of themselves so they didn't have, you know, so that didn't happen to them or be able to, I don't know. It's bizarre. Yeah. yeah. And like, I think even in that scenario where you have like, you know, all the healthcare available and all the... You should still the have... Post, you should still be able to have yes, an abortion. Yeah. Like, at the I end of the day, like, some people just straight up don't want kids. Yeah, and sometimes birth control fails. Where we grew up and we, we went to a Catholic church growing up, mm-hmm. and every year you'd see the little field of white crosses or whatever for that. I don't know if they still do that. Mm-hmm. But even from their point of view, fully legalized abortion with all that all that stuff we were talking about, mm-hmm. though there would be fewer, There'd be fewer crosses in that if field. If you actually want a fewer, that's how you do yeah. it. And that's the thing is... People talk about being pro-life and everything, and they're not. They're, no, they're not. And they're pro birthing children to put into the fiery arms of Moloch. And they, 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 they're death. They're pro-death. You know? No, they, they absolutely sacrifice are. it. To, cogs in the wheel. We started with cogs in the wheel. Mm-hmm. That's what they want is yeah. cogs in the wheel uh, <laughs> to fuel this blood-soaked machine. Yeah, and I, I think I don't know. I was reading something about how, like, even if. Because, like, people draw a lot of comparisons or, like, connections to Uvalde and saying, well, like, they won't care if they get shot. And I'm like, I don't think they do because they, a lot of times, Christians will be like, well, if a kid dies, they go to heaven. <laughs> so, like, yeah. I don't think they care. I just genuinely don't think they care. No. I, I, no, they definitely don't. <laughs> I hadn't even thought of the weird theocratic side of it. But, mm-hmm. but Wouldn't yeah. you think a fetus would go to heaven, too? It's It's just a very strange... I guess I haven't been baptized. Leap. Well, that's why the Catholics do it so soon. Yeah, as soon as so they're fucking can, out. So you can avoid that Ugh. little. But, you know, maybe you get a good spot in hell or purgatory or something. <laughs> this is the baby corner of hell. <laughs> it's just a nursery. <laughs> the nicest demons go there to Aww. take care of them. Um, hell sounds rad. Yeah, it's, it is just particularly jarring. And maybe that's part of the, we were talking about at the beginning, uh, undue amount of shock. 
mm-hmm. about mm-hmm. this. I think part of it maybe is the whiplash of Uvalde in this. Yeah, I think is that it? definitely took our eyes off the ball in, in that term. Not like that's not important, but like it just feels like it's unending. Well, yeah, I just mean the like, I think we're in a post hypocrisy society now, but just like going from talking mm. about the side saying, look at everyone dying. Who gives a fuck? And then the other side saying, like, it's cool. Yeah, we just need more guns or mm-hmm. whatever. Obviously, on the left, we have very a very broad spectrum of experiences and opinions about guns and, and gun safety and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but can I make a note on that? Sure. I'm against guns for everybody. <laughs> okay. Here's the thing. Well, here's the thing. I I'm not comfortable with guns, but like I guess what I'm saying is that like I think it's important when you say, "Oh, let's ban whatever guns." I mean the police too. <laughs> Ah, okay. Because we, you can't take away the guns from the people and just leave them all to the let's fucking the, police. Yeah, let's let the police. Like, do if it they have us. guns, we should also have guns. What do they ever do wrong? <laughs> exactly. That's my thing. I'm like, when I say I don't want guns, I mean I want to also disarm the police. And and the military. And the military. You could just use those guys. It, okay. All like, right. No, if we're gonna get rid of them, we should get rid of all of them. Or if we're gonna keep them, we, everyone should have them. Keep all. Okay. All right. <laughs> It's all or nothing here. I think it's consistent. I haven't thought through the problems potentially. I haven't either. So I'm really. I guess the, the pro- shit. I guess the first problem is Exhibit A, American society. We all <laughs> we're we're kind of in that version where we all have the guns. <laughs> Not really. I guess the cops have more advanced guns than we do. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. We get rid of the no level of the playing field. And then we start like the troll boy said, "Get us a new." And then, I was gonna say we start training militias. <laughs> all right, and then. Hey, this is not a bad Dan, theory. Dan and Dave were not actually doing this. Yeah, Dave and Dan, yeah, our saving grace is that we're too lazy. We're extremely lazy, so, guys. I just took a big nap. I have a, <laughs> I no, there's just no way. But if there are any, you know, more enterprising <laughs> leftists out there, <laughs> Governor Ronald Reagan of California mm-hmm. became pretty, pretty anti-gun. When black when, people started getting guns. When the Black Panthers started drilling and organizing and publicly carrying guns to places then that changed their tune pretty quickly Mm -hmm. so we all of a sudden have leftist militias out there training in public areas (laughs) and public parks and shit with with rifles they might change their tune on that now they might just all round you all up and send you to black sites in syria or whatever that that might happen too uh very likely to happen actually (laughs) um but maybe not throwing it out there (laughs) Uh, I also, I had already texted you about this. It's not fresh, but uh, <laughs> I was reading about this ridiculous article that Emily Bazelon Oh, did. yeah. Did you end up reading it? I didn't have it. I read heart. the quotes from that thing that you were saying. Yeah. But. yeah, I just read some of the quotes. But uh, she just wrote this really irresponsible article about, like, transitioning, and she just both sides the fuck out of it. But in a way that, like, kind of, I think... I don't know. I think was irresponsible. Like she just was like, "Oh, I'm just showing both sides," and like that's the point of journalism and whatever. But I'm like, she didn't. She like took people out of context in their quotes. Like she was like really insensitive when interviewing like the trans people for her article. Like she was clearly digging at like, "Do you regret it? Do you regret it?" And it's like, whoa, like that's not cool. And she was quoting like a really like gender critical, like really transphobic organization without like properly setting up. They're like, hey, this is like a bad organization. Mm -hmm. So it was just shitty, right? Yeah. And I was really upset about it because like I used to enjoy Slate's work Uh and she was a voice on the Slate's political gap fest. This is my liberal days, but whatever. Hey, I I used to listen to it too. Yeah. We were little Obama Dems Mm -hmm. back in the day. And it wasn't that I was mad about that for that reason. It was more like, if this is where mainstream Democrats are going, like, we're in some trouble. And that is the problem that, like, I find when I talk to, like, regular cis people who don't know trans people. Mm -hmm. Those are the questions they have of, like, well, we can't transition children. It's like, well, almost nobody does. Yeah. (laughs) Like, usually you do social transition first. You might get puberty blockers. And those are also reversible. Like, it's not a big deal. Like, we're not being irresponsible, but like, everyone comes with these really bad faith, like, misinformation. Yeah. And that's my concern. And I think that's, again, what we talked about with abortion. Everyone comes in with like preconceived notions of what they think abortion are. Mm-hmm. Um, so, like, my problem is, is that 
I mean, one, Democrats just love to take both sides and be like, look how reasonable and smart I am. I can see all the nuance and all the the what ifs of the situation. So I'm very smart. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, and, and so like they do that and that just gives room for the other side to push back. Uh, maybe like... You can address that there's nuance, but like it's like our thing with abortion like we talked about like if you had the system to like totally support having children or not and birth control mm -hmm. i still want the access to abortion yeah so like i think we just got to make some rules guys yeah no uh, i guess what i mean is like the other side's going to push back regardless they are but like if you come at it in the middle they're just going to push you back further and further yeah i mean that's what the democratic party is yeah and i think one silver lining to the ruling <laughs> is that Hopefully, enough people come away from this experience seeing the utter and complete uselessness. Yeah. The intentional uselessness of the Democratic Party. Yeah. Again, like, they are we can't the. Just vote our way out of this one. Yeah. They're clear for everyone to see. At least anyone who's paying attention. Professional losers. Yeah. They're the Washington Generals of. <laughs> uh, to, to the Republican Harlem Globetrotters. Fantastic. And, and they, they like set themselves up. They're a little, you know, Charlie Brown going up to kick the football. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But anyway, so yeah, I had just read that article and then I got the row news the next day and I was just like, man, this, this is a rough time to be alive. I'm piling it on. <laughs> yeah. But I uh, sleepily wrote a note in my notes app, which I'm just going to proclaim as Christine's. We don't give a lot of like rules here on like, what does it mean to be a communist? Okay. Yeah. And we get a lot of questions of like, can I still be a communist if I have an Airbnb or whatever oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. it is, that kind of stuff. Uh -huh. I'm going to give a rule. Okay. You can't be a communist if you are anti-choice or anti-trans. Okay. I'm kicking you out. I don't, I'm going to take your card away. I'm going to say no. Get so out of here. You can't just be a bad communist? No, I don't want them. I don't want them at all. You can talk about it if you want, if you're open to changing your mind, sure. We'll sit yeah. down and talk, but like, it's about bodily autonomy. Like, you can't just fucking take that away from people. Hmm. And like, the thing with the thing with trans laws is we're already seeing that crackdown even for cis people. What do you mean? A woman got an indecent exposure ticket in like Florida for wearing a crop top. Okay. Like that's that's who they're gunning for next is anyone who doesn't present the way they want them to present. They're doing. They're gonna do like fucking like genital exams for children in sports yeah I bet so anyone who is slightly off either hormonally or chromosomally or genitalia wise like intersex people you're all or like fucked. if you're just kind of like a really buff yeah kind of yeah you know you present more a little more masculine like you're or you're getting to the weird biology of it in presentation like people are going to start trying to clock people and people are really bad at this by the what way is this? <laughs> but like clock yeah oh that means like you're trying to say like oh that person looks trans like, mm, oh. okay like people and people do that already like if you're trying to use the restroom they're like hey get out of here and you're like I, this is where i'm supposed to go <laughs> or you know yeah so like that's just gonna get worse yeah and it's gonna get worse for cis people too like if you happen to be a woman with short hair or like who is tall or buff or just presents a little more masculine or if you're a guy who's like short and clean shaven like it, they're coming for you too. They want us all to fucking like be the same. <laughs> Maybe not. So I'm not. I'm, I'm. I think generational stuff is kind of bullshit. But it would be nice if it if it weren't like you know because millennials and, and I mean I'd and, love to be saved and Zoomers and stuff like we're more socially like we're we're just like uh, I don't want to be in people's business sort mm -hmm, of thing. Mm -hmm. Some people are, I guess, not everyone. But if that could save us, is like wow. Imagine like the horrific idea of not like the being kind to humans thing but just the inner the having to interact with someone and say like are you the right gender to go into here oh it's you're just thinking horrifying. the social anxiety of yeah the social anxiety take. would would <laughs> save us in some way of like damn why don't we just set up like our own you know not gender i guess gender neutral bathroom but yeah. like everything's like so i silo it off that we just don't have to don't have, have to, to talk, talk about to it and you can believe uh, whatever, but we'll obviously, we'll to abortion too. Like, I'm not going about to ask you about your sex life. That's way too awkward. <laughs> you do you? Yeah, but I mean, that wouldn't work because the right wing is raising their own, mm -hmm. you know, next generation too. So, yeah, 
I don't know the the thing the the Florida thing that's that seemed like it was I haven't seen a trend of that mm-hmm. so I don't know if that's more widespread or really fits in yeah I don't know either but, but it, it just made me think of the fact that like they're they're going for anyone who is slightly non-conforming and like that this opens the door to it if you can now just like start questioning people's gender whenever the fuck you want like that's dangerous what's the solution to that I mean let trans people do what they want to do <laughs> <laughs> let them transition if they want to transition. Uh, let people present how they want to present. Most people aren't rapists, so like let them use whatever bathroom they want to use. It preferably, like unisex bathrooms are just generally they're more pleasant. For, I think we can all agree. When what? you get a private bathroom instead of having to go into stalls, yeah, that's you're true. Like I can actually shit in here. <laughs> what we could do is <laughs> if like, I have a jumpsuit on, I can take my time. <laughs> I don't remember how much, how many millions or billions of dollars we spend like. Maintaining our submarine fleet. <laughs> I feel like submarine, submarine fleets. Submarines are out. Who's still in a submarine? What? I mean, there's guys in submarines still, but like, when's the last time we used a submarine? Think about it. this. Is just as a this is a low key, easy liberal solution. Okay, <laughs> you don't have to do any people's democracy, any communes, or anything to do this. You just slash a little bit of the budget, take that money, give it to. You can even give it to all the businesses. Yeah, all right. that's and fine. Tell, Say, refab hey, your bathroom. Yeah, and, and then it. boom, one thing off the board, we can check off a little victory there for democracy and freedom. <laughs> I mean, the thing is, like, trans people make up a very small part of the population. Mm-hmm. Let's just be and And I'm sure the numbers are larger than whatever they actually are estimating. Yeah, but not by a lot. But not by a lot. Like, I, it's, it's pretty rare. Yeah. So, like, they're over-legislating for like this very small segment of the community but that le- that again it opens the door to larger issues of privacy and of like gender policing just shit you don't want to be doing and it's also e- e- eugenics basically yeah 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 now i was thinking you were saying earlier and i was like pushing back maybe like i don't know if they're going that far to be like fascistic really but this is pretty if fash. you think when we were talking about those kind of characteristics of fascism, it's like, well, come up with like a, a scapegoat, come up with like, you know, and it's like, they're not, obviously the thing with fascism is those enemies aren't really doing the things that you're saying they're doing. No. They're not as they're big not of a menace as you're saying. and yeah. whatever, but yeah. that's kind of what they're doing here is yeah. you're saying like the, the, the trans menace of all this. And, yeah. And, and, and the gay panic too, that's definitely coming back too. Yeah. So, I mean, it's... It's rough. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's my that's my big rule for communism. New okay. rule. New rule. Okay, so are we ex post factoing this or not? What does that mean? So that's going for, going forward. Oh yeah, going forward. Okay, so we can like keep Stalin in the party. I'm yeah, reading about yeah. Stalin now. Dude, fucked up because he was like. Uh, criminalize homosexuality. Boo, See, that's that. bad. But he did like other communist things. Yeah, I think that's fair. We have to keep in context of time, you know. But it was also shitty. Like it's, it's like... shitty. And like, here's the thing: trans people have existed for way longer than people like yeah. think. Yeah. I was reading about like. And in various the... societies, are actually they were actually ex- were and are actually accepted and stuff mm-hmm. like as a real you know. It was fine. Society wide, they were like, this is a thing that people are mm-hmm. versus like having to like struggle for their rights and things like we do. Yeah. I mean, even in the United States, like in the twenties, there was like, it was, there was a bustling gay scene in, in mm-hmm. New York and like with people who were just completely out and trans, like that was yeah. the thing. They don't call them the gay nineties for nothing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, oh, I had something. Mm. So this goes back to our, our conversation on democracy. And I was thinking. All right. Because, again, with our little utopia that we built around abortion, if we built a similar <laughs> utopia oh. in in democracy of like, well, let's get rid of all the voting restriction laws, like, let's make it super easy, even if we did some of the shit of like, well, you can do the local election to the national election, like some of the stuff we talked about, like around Cuba and mm-hmm. like Vietnam, and like, even if we implemented all those ideas... If you don't get rid of capitalism, it's pointless. Yes. Because even if you say, even if you say no campaign financing, it's still pointless because the media is still being funded. Yeah. So like, I'm just like, you can't separate those. Like people are like, I want money out of politics. I'm like, then you want to get rid of money. 
<laughs> yeah, you want to get rid of <laughs> private ownership of capital. <laughs> yeah, you should just be like, welcome, comrade. <laughs> Me too. Because otherwise, because there's not a way to do it, not a way to balance those two. There's you can not. make the laws or whatever, but like you said about the media influence, and then you could say, well, ban campaigning, do like they do in Europe, and mm -hmm. it's like... But they'll still got... write stories about these people, right? Yeah, yeah, the, 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 the newspapers and, and just media outlets in general can... They can't do campaign ads, but mm -hmm. they can... They can spin things however they want. They have a part. Everyone has a partisan press. It's just kind of low key, you know. <laughs> they don't print it on the headline. <laughs> yeah, so I'm you, this, and here's what I think. So you have that, and you can say, well, that's fine because leftists can put out their own stuff with with you know, what money? Yeah, with less money, obviously. But <laughs> you could argue that, I guess, to some extent, but it's still there. And there's literally no way to reach democracy unless you're out of capitalism. I think. To reach a true and fair democracy. Well, the reformists would say that if you put this, if you put those restrictions in place, they would say they would add that the numbers favor the workers such that, you know, yeah, the other side's better funded, but we could still elect socialists. So we could still elect a house full of, a house and a Senate full of Bernies. I don't think so, because... <laughs> I mean, one, we'd have to get there, which, like, how the fuck do you do that? But two, even if we got there to to where someone was able to pass all that to make voting more open, again, I think the power of the media, like, clearly has people under a fucking spell. Mm -hmm. And and it and that's where all these fucking misconceptions come from. So I just don't think we can like totally wash our hands of it at that point. I think it's a blend of two things like the media make it worse and social media makes it worse mm -hmm. and that's all structured through capitalism the real pressure i feel like on people isn't like well they said it on fox news or they said it on whatever on this tiktok i saw but mm -hmm. like their social connections with people in their life they're very like reinforcing too it's like the people that i talk to my yeah. friends and stuff are reactionaries so that's what we talk about and agree on and believe. Yeah, that's you know, true. How do you break that? But I mean, still, uh, the brainwashing and the media aside, I think you're right that capitalism has to go. <laughs> I think we can all agree. I think agree. we can agree on that. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's out. So last year. If only because, like, let's say you did fantasy succeed in doing, you know, in getting if you, if you succeed in getting a bare foothold in government and whatever mm -hmm. a i wake you, up and i'm in joe biden's body first off i vomit for 24 hours straight well because, you die if you do that okay well that's fine i guess i can take, take i'll, I'll take him out with myself <laughs> Just, <laughs> i first off i kill myself take one for the team um dave and dan we do not know how to body swap we do not <laughs> we don't have the technology i well i just spent i'd be mourning my beautiful body but uh -huh. Yeah, well, let's say I have an unprecedented amount of power. I'm, I'm an actually effective president, which yeah. doesn't really exist anymore. But <laughs> even if that happens. Even if that happens and you have, like, a legislature behind you, mm -hmm. we, we keep reinforcing this. We don't want you to forget the lesson or forget this idea and get a little too bright-eyed and stuff. Is that when you go too far, the forces of reaction will just come and get you. Yeah, oh, and then... We even talk about this, the Miranda rights thing. It wasn't as big. No. Well, I think people were just saying, like, really cool that they rescinded that right before, like, mass protests about abortion. Like, pretty chill move. Well, they can, they still have to read you your Miranda rights. But they, the but they, like, got wishy-washy on it. Like, if you can't, they can't get in trouble if they don't or something? No, it's not that. So, what is it? just to clarify, uh, cops still have to read you your Miranda rights or whatever you do from that point on. Mm -hmm. Like, let's say you just forget everything mm -hmm. and decide, well, I'll just talk to the cops. They'll be my friends. They'll Don't help me do out. That. Never do that. Yeah. Never talk to the cops. Never. You just ask for your lawyer until they get tired and let you get your lawyer. Mm -hmm. Or they send you to a black camp, black side in Syria or whatever. <laughs> but um, <laughs> one or the other, don't talk to them. But if they do forget to or don't decide not to Mirandaize you, then 
stuff is inadmissible until they do. Mm. And it's still like blocked from courts and stuff. They can't bring it in your court case and stuff like that. Or they can declare mis a mistrial and stuff if they did do all this evidence, but then it comes back that they didn't Miranda rise. Mm, okay. And cops can still get in trouble for that okay. if the city decides to. They never will. So if the city or sheriff's office or whatever is like, huh, you know, officer whoever didn't do, you know, they fucked up the Miranda thing. That's fine. He's a pretty good officer. We're going to keep him. <laughs> used to could you could sue them for violating your rights mm. for violating that right of yours and then you could like you know, that would be it's not a way to punish you can't sue them and put them in jail but you could get some sort of a redress for it okay civilly. so that's what they got and rid that's of. what they got rid of so you can't sue them anymore get some money or get them fired or something like that you know but they could still get in trouble if it's like the city's like i had to pay 15 fucking million dollars to mm -hmm. this guy because you you're fired you know yeah yeah so and you can still sue i think you can still sue like the city or the entity who has like the um, money and time for suing people people with lawyers i don't know yeah people. right like people who have a lawyer like that even that concept is foreign to me yeah but that's the distinction so yeah. i guess uh some people i thought some people were a little too panicky about it because okay. of that nuance it's still, I mean, it's not, it's good. not good. It's not yeah. the direction you want to be going in, but it's not nearly as like heinous as the road <laughs> no decision, you know? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Or they just like, no, Miranda rights. No, no you don't have any of those. <laughs> no. We just figured while we're in the rights section, we would just do some cleaning. So there, yeah. People say, well, we're not fair and balanced. We did a little bit of nuance there. <laughs> mm, yes. Yes. Sure. Both sides. That's mm. not a no, both sides thing. fuck that. That's just... The facts. Just the facts. Uh, <laughs> and the fact is, you can't be a communist unless you're pro-choice and pro-trans people. All right, let's add some... What, what, what else? else? So, I was thinking, like, we don't want to be exclusionary, right? You don't want to be like... We want to be a very small, perfectly <laughs> ideologically homogenous party. Uh-huh. Because then we're not going to get anything done. We could reduce it more. We could say pro-bodily autonomy. That's broader. Oh, I see what you're saying. I guess like not reduce less specific. it, but yeah. And then people have different interpretations of it. I think when you when you put it in those terms, like the nuances we've been talking about with abortion, the nuances we've been talking about with trans stuff, that's what it comes down to is like a lack of privacy and a lack of, and, and a, a, a horniness for gender conformity and all that shit. And I think those are both fine, honestly. Like if someone's really a comrade... It should be pretty easy to demystify. If, if for some reason they come in the door, they're otherwise a good communist or mm -hmm. socialist or whatever, but they have hangups there. I feel like they would be winnable because they probably don't have like a, if, like a barbaric hangup. Probably on not. Them. They probably have like those kinds of questions we were talking about. Yeah. So. I think that would be fine to like, you know, we're not saying go, you go know. Go fuck yourself. Yeah, and we're not saying go be an asshole to people who aren't like as ide as as ideal passionate. or as like as passionate, as knowledgeable on those issues. Maybe mm -hmm. don't go be an asshole to them about yeah. that, even though they're otherwise a good socialist. But like you want, we want to make sure that people are like on board with that program overall, that they don't just leave that out. That's why I thought the bodily autonomy might be more accessible. Yeah. That might be something people be like, yeah, I do. And then you'd be like, cool, that includes this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I think then if you put in that in those terms, they'd be like, well, that makes it okay. like, again, or privacy, I think is under that too. I think you could also say, I mean, if you boil it down, I mean, one, if they're, if they've read their theory, again, Marx mentions this too. So. Which we're not telling you to go tell them to read no, theory. No, don't, do, don't that. do that. That's never cool. <laughs> Maybe recommend a couple of podcast episodes if, if they you have to. ask you, but, sure, but yeah. never just go out with that. Don't it's, lead with that. That's like a hot. third date sort of thing. Yeah, and even then, like, if they say no, they say no. Move on. But what I'm saying is, like, if you boil it down, you know, we talk about this a lot, like, the actual goal of communism and socialism is, is to provide for people. I think this all this easily falls under that. Yeah. Like if you think about the, our 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 pro choice uh, utopia we built, that is all about providing for people. Yeah, and to me, so I think that's a big part of it, providing for people. For for me, I guess uh, my lens or mm, what I always think about it in terms of is freeing people. Freeing people is another but, way. I, I hesitate to use that because 
our version of freedom is so fun. But I up. like it because I like to reclaim that. Like, oh, I'm like, it's okay. cool. Like, we should be freedom. Like, yeah, we, we're the freedom party. Yeah, these guys are assholes. <laughs> they really want to. What do they want to do? They want to oppress you. We were mm-hmm. just talking about all the ways they want to do that in gender. Mm-hmm. They want to oppress you economically, obviously. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, Shackle they want you with a baby you don't want. <laughs> yeah, and, and oppress you in terms of like making you, keeping you in, subjugated to a job because you have to struggle for survival and mm-hmm. stuff. Like, we're saying we want everyone to be provided for. We want to free them from having to, you know, claw themselves uh, along and to, to get by. Yeah. You know, we want to free them from Ooh. those chains, free You're them free from. Guy. Uh, yeah, you got I'm, I'm like kindergarten guy. I'm like, isn't it nice to share things? <laughs> I want snacks. <laughs> yeah. Snacks. <laughs> Just, you know, take care of your friends. Yeah. <laughs> and that's good, both. too. We can do both. And maybe, maybe, maybe they're different stages as well. Like, you. You maybe have to. You probably have to take care of the providing for first before you can be like, okay, turn everyone loose. Here you go. You know. Well, That's but like, you also have to break free of capitalism first, which is part of the freedom. Yeah. So it's a mix, <laughs> freedom and providing. All right. So we've been going through it shooting here, that shit. We're shooting the shit, talking about all this nonsense that's been happening. Mm-hmm. The question remains: Now in 2022, as it did. Back in 1917, what is to be done? I was going to say that. <laughs> well, I do have some raw meat in there. <laughs> yeah, we need to start a workout plan. <laughs> I hate exercise. Eat a bunch of steak tartar. Oh. Get buff. I think immediate future. It's okay. I want to caution mm, some, some things. Yes. Because Ca- I've been seeing a lot of stuff online about. <laughs> People just being like, I'll drive you to another state to get an abortion. Let's not post that online. Okay, yeah. I think in person with your immediate circle, make it very clear if you have not already or if they haven't figured it out by now that like you are there if yeah. they need you for an abortion. And now's the time to do that. We're going to, I'm about to get real conspiratorial here, mm. but like now is the time to form those like trusted connections and stuff while the feds haven't put out like. Undercover agents, basically. Oh, yeah. Who Same. are infiltrating you. your groups and stuff and and saying, like, oh, I'm in need. Would you please help me or whatever? I was thinking more, like, tech privacy, like... Oh, for sure. Saying, keep well, it. there's no more right to privacy, so I can just listen in on your fucking conversations. And- yeah, you have to keep it off of your phone. Uh, the... The real crazies call this OPSEC. <laughs> yes, yes. The Faraday bag for your phone. <laughs> yeah, so put your phone away when you're doing... Ill- illegal thing. So what are all these laws? Do all mm. these laws say like you can't leave to go to another state to do it? Like so, how do they do that? Let me check. I believe you can still go to another state. Because one thing that that would run into is or one way to, you know, do a liberal technocratic solution to it would just be to say interstate commerce law. You can't prohibit prohibit people from going to other states to, mm-hmm. to buy shit. As of now, it looks like you can still go to other states and not be prosecuted. But there might be legal battles on issues uh, on on that in the future and mm-hmm. also accessing abortion pills by mail. Um, what I've heard is probably like the most low key way is to find someone in that state who will order the pills for you and then set up or set up a forwarding address. Mm. Um, so that way it's not coming directly from you know, the company that you're getting it from. But mail right now is not illegal. It just you, may be in the future. It, it may be in the future. In states with restrictions, many people have continued to access pills through overseas pharmacies. For now, it's legal gray area. This is coming from... Which means it's legal. Yeah, it's legal. (laughs) If it's gray, it's legal. It's legal until they roll it back, which they probably will, or try to. Yeah. So yeah, those are just some of the tips that I have read about on, on accessing birth control, either by mail or by making plans to travel, like... I think just be the person in people's lives that they know they can come to if they need help. Yeah. If that's financially or if that's, um, I'll drive you, if that's, I'll go to the clinic with you, whatever it is. If you live in one of those states where it's le- where it's legal, be a person that like someone can call from another state and be like, hey, I have a friend who needs to stay there, whatever. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So be that person. <laughs> be the good Samaritan. Like this is really the time for community care right now. Probably y'all have figured out this based on how our how our feelings are about charities and stuff, but you're gonna wanna go to more local 
abortion networks. So what does this mean? Like, um, what? The, the thing is, a Planned Parenthood is already extremely well funded. Okay. You know, they're the ones getting the big old checks, and a lot of that is going to go to like lobbying and stuff, which is important and like whatever. But they were the main lobbying force. They got us done to a this great point. job. So yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. They they have their own set of problems. What I'm saying is, the, if you want your money to go further, I think at this point, it's probably a smarter idea to look up abortion funds and, and try to go that way. Because that way, you're those are going towards the cost of getting the abortion, the travel, all that shit. Directly helping people get around this shit. Yes. Versus the long-term strategy of changing the legal framework altogether yeah Planned Parenthood and like ACLU and orgs like that there's so much overhead there's so much legal battles that they have to pay for there's so much admin that at the end of the day I don't know how much abortions they actually pay for I'm sure it's a significant amount but now one action <laughs> definitely not to take what is not to be done okay what is not <laughs> don't allow your popular you know your personal energy don't allow the general popular energy about this to be rerouted to be diverted into the <laughs> graveyard of social movements mm -hmm. the democratic party don't let them pretend like fucking hold them accountable like these guys were in charge and they can say oh but like we didn't have a majority oh there's a filibuster oh there's a blah, blah, blah. you were in charge and you fucked up yeah and you we voted for you specifically because you said you would protect her and guess what you didn't fucking do mm -hmm. and they've been doing that for election after election this has been their football it's this is the most important election of our lives we have to yada yada the supreme court they've been doing it for a long time and they prove themselves to be useless mm -hmm. worse than useless intentionally dropping the ball yeah you can't you can't let yourself be distracted by them no no and i think Again, because they're so mealy-mouthed on these things, because they want to seem reasonable, because they, like, pal around with with these people, and because they, you know, nominate anti-choice people, like, and say, oh, it's totally fine to be anti-choice and be a Democrat. Like, mm -hmm. they're the ones pushing the window over. They're the ones, like, making it so that it's acceptable to do this, and they're seeding ground. Yeah, because it did, did not used to be, you know, used to have, instead of pro-life anti-choice democrats used to have pro-choice republicans yeah that's not a thing now no but that used to be you know god i forgot about that and, and, <laughs> what and a weird so, time yeah like you know people make a come up with funny terms about it or whatever and you'll hear in the news of the overton window or whatever like that but i mean America's just had a rightward shift. America's yeah. gotten more right wing. Or like you had like Catholic Democrats who were against abortion, but a lot of those it seemed like it was in a personal sense of like I would like to not have an abortion. Oh yeah, the majority, <laughs> the majority of uh, Catholic politicians. That's I don't actually know because there are Catholic Republicans and stuff too, mm -hmm. who are hyper. We used to have them. Yeah, it, yeah. The, the religion part it depends, but the the point is, Democrats are going to come at you. And say, please give us money, support <laughs> us, vote for us. We'll save you. Fucking break them over the coals. They won't do any of that. Yeah. You can, when it comes down to it, if you have the time, you can make the strategic decision of, do I want to go vote for them or whatnot? Mm -hmm. Fine. That's, no one's going to kick, that's not one of our things to kick people out of the party for. But you could also make the fun decision of like, if you see these fuckers on the street, just harassing them. <laughs> I don't think anyone should be able to get any rest at this point. Yeah, and and remember, you know, people can say things to people in public, and and it's it's not illegal. Yeah, you know, that's fine. You can cross over the territory, and you know, we're not saying like break actual laws and get yourself in trouble. You can call them a shithead. <laughs> yeah, ain't no can, law against that. There are yeah, there are things you can do to make their life worse. Their li <laughs> and their lives should be made <laughs> they should worse. Be yeah absolutely um, we can't encourage you to 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 really go out there and, and break the law or anything without being prepared to go ahead and break the law itself like like <laughs> the whole system. the whole system yeah, yeah you can do that go for it once you we're to that point button. yeah once we're to that point do that yeah, for theoretically sure. hypothetically but, so are we limiting it then and saying like socialist communist anarchists we should just be looking to help people in their immediate situation. Is no. there anything broader we can do? Or I mean, I think that's that's you know the the immediate step for critical care right now. 
I mean, I think the larger thing, because I, okay, let's talk about this. I've seen a lot of calls for like a general strike. And I've seen a lot of takes on like, hey guys, you can't just say general strike and do a general strike. You have to have a lot of prep. Yeah. In an ideal, like robust union era, we would be able to do that because we'd have systems in place. Everyone would be in union and you could take care of each other that way. You'd have a strike fund. You'd have all the groundwork laid. Yeah. So I think that would be the longer term goal is to unionize if okay. you can. I don't know how to fucking do that. So I'm really talking to my ass here. Uh-huh. If you want to figure out how to do that, go for it. <laughs> Start unionization drives. Yeah. Okay. And I mean, you can get basically the best way to do that is to get into contact with a large, you know, with a, a union that already exists. I think that's um, probably good because I was, I was going to ask this, like, like starting a union, unless if you work in like a service industry or somewhere where you are physically going somewhere, I think it's, you are in contact with people face to face and you can have more on the ground conversations. How the fuck are you supposed to unionize virtually? Because they're just going to keep all those fucking receipts unless I ask for everybody's personal phone number. Yeah, that's what you would have to do. Okay. Because <laughs> um, otherwise... It's like, hey, are you trying to unionize? I found this Teams chat. <laughs> yeah, otherwise they'll... They have access to all your stuff that you communicate through, okay, through so their Okay, so if means. you're trying to unionize an office, you know, a virtual space, keep that in mind. Yeah, yeah. So the way you do it in person, okay. right... Well, the reason I said is get in contact with these other unions is they can kind of walk you through this process. Yes. Um, like uh, the Starbucks mm-hmm. and the Amazon, these guys had had help from uh, like a more nationwide organization, but they, it was still the workers there doing the actual work. But it they was got just, the steps. Yeah, they got the steps, the resources of like, hey, here's what you'll need, that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's vital. I think that's vital. That's like why that stuff succeeded. Yeah, um, for sure. And it's interesting that like, these mega corporations are the ones getting unionized and it's because they have so many employees mm-hmm. and so they had so many that i feel like the chances were higher that someone would start that and yeah and it's it's easier because now they have like a network and if you're looking at like the specific instances too the units themselves were pretty small like i mean if like a starbucks here or mm-hmm. whatever like it was location not Amazon itself mm-hmm. or whatever, so you you could you had a lower threshold of like I just got to convince like twenty people who work here that <laughs> yeah but yeah so you, you know you, you get those materials get that guideline and then one of the one of the steps is is like kind of informally building up your network of like kind of this is something we do in everyday life right kind of sounding out your your people you know is like feeling them out yeah how are they in terms of their views on this sort of shit. And then organizing like displays. So like it can be as simple as, hey, Monday, we're going to wear red shirts or we're all going to wear this one pin or mm-hmm. something like a, so, some sort of a, a, a test to see how we we'll do things. Yeah. How can we coordinate an action, even if not like a real labor action? Yeah. Can we like can we literally, you know, organize our way out of a paper bag? <laughs> like, yeah. You know? Yeah. Because I mean, like, that's also like a good smell test of. Like, are there going to be people who are too scared to do mm, that? Yeah. Yeah. Which sucks that people have to feel that way, but yeah, right. it's a real thing. And so that's one of the things that you'll have to do with like getting, if you're doing it virtually, mm-hmm. you know, you're going to have to get people's numbers and like add them to like a discord or something, mm-hmm. something off of the company's for sure uh, resources. I hear signals or good. If some privacy. people, yeah, if some people are working in the office versus some people at home, they got to do that on their own data. Yeah. Because they can pull your shit if you're on their Wi-Fi. Oh, that's right. That's right. So there's all sorts of things to, to look into in, in, as far as that goes. We could do a deeper dive with this at some point. Yeah, we could do our own episode, I think, on, Let's do on that. that. So organizing, that's that's the, that's the long-term part of I think so, because it, I, sure. I, I, don't see, I don't see another way forward, except for, like, I'm not saying to do this, Dan. I'm saying, theoretically, violence. All right. <laughs> I mean, I just don't. I mean, we're backed into a fucking corner here. Did you have another option? Social Democrats, Democratic Socialists say you don't have to do violence. You could, you know. Do what? Start a party. Oh, good. Win some elections. Win more elections. Win lots of elections. Then take power. <sighs> we don't got time for that shit. I just don't think we do. 
partially we you know i, I think the organizing thing is good mm-hmm. that builds our long-term revolutionary potential uh it's because that would also help if we wanted to go the violence route <laughs> yeah yeah i mean you'd have systems in place you have you know our americanized version of like soviets or workers councils mm-hmm. basically the more places that you run democratically business-wise you know whatever the the more companies you run democratically the more power you have in a capitalist system because you control like that industry or whatever yeah well the so the so the starting a party thing you said way too slow i mean all unionizing is also slow it's also slow yeah. yeah i guess i just have so little faith left in the electoral system that i just i'm like woof i don't know <laughs> what if you could make some changes to the electoral system through like the wholly inadequate Current political one? process or whatever but use that to get them to mess it up thinking that they're making concessions to us mm-hmm. and then like that makes it easier for us in the future here's my here's what i'm saying mm-hmm. uh first off this relies on popular pressure yeah so like one thing is we need to like i think we need to be out there we need to be out there but i think in very organized like in more organized ways than people realize mm-hmm. one of the things i saw a lot of calls for was oh we're going to do a protest here we're going to do that there and it's like the power structure knows that unless they're they're looking at literal millions of people in the streets or whatever like actual at that point kind of general strike not the general strike but like shutting down everyone. cities and stuff yeah. yeah like like if it interferes economically then it's a big deal but short of that they're just gonna wait you out yeah. they're gonna rough up some people they're gonna wait till all of it subsides and they're gonna intentionally rough up some people because that's gonna split the the popular support Mm -hmm. because some people are going to say we shouldn't have provoked the cops and then some people are going to be like oh we need to be peaceful and some people are going to be like burn the shit down because it's immoral Mm -hmm. and they know that that's going to divide us they've done that before yeah but unless it unless it's literally everybody well not literally everyone but like unless it's so (laughs) bad for them that like it starts hurting the economy Mm -hmm. they're going to be content with just disrupting us like that and then waiting it out yeah it's worked before yeah so it's happened in 2020 yeah uh so it's so whatever protests we put together have to be like large enough scale to disrupt the economy (laughs) and then they also have to have some they have to have some sort of organization yeah because again if you're disrupting the economy if everyone is like not working because they're protesting for however many days straight you have to have food you have to have like a way to take care of people during that time and it essentially becomes a strike fund all over again. Yeah, you do need that. I would argue that it's going. there's going to have to be something else to catalyze us in the future. Like, this isn't going to be it. Yeah. So my idea of it is that you would need a, a dedicated revolutionary party that does not call itself communist because America yeah, has too much of a problem with stupid. that. And socialist and stuff. Like, we have to just be like, the freedom party or the american <laughs> party or something Ugh. stupid okay and this is why your malice will just say yeah that's bullshit you can't you guys can't do a revolution there because you're in the imperial court and yeah. i get it kind of like because this sounds ridiculous but like let's say it were to okay. work because we're lousy utopians and we like to do hypotheticals so you have to have some sort of party like that mm-hmm. by party what do you mean uh, so by party i mean like a political organization they, they yeah. don't necessarily there's a disagreement about this they don't necessarily have to go run for office mm. they can uh, but they don't like have to there was a dispute like lenin yeah yeah, yeah. They, they, they argued about that and i think it's fine either way really but what they need to be doing and what where i think maybe they should run for office sometimes because americans care so much about that yeah is they just need to be winning popular support and to be out there with you know in today's era it's just like just with, with the right takes yeah, yeah they need to be posting the right takes already and, posting. but and but they need to be tied in with these like mutual assistance mm. um movements that you're talking about strike funds and things mm-hmm. you know they need to be tied into that tied into the the labor movements and not the big organized donating to the democratic party ones but mm-hmm. like the real ones that are that are grassroots and revolutionary like they have to be convincing people that in the american context that they're going to save the country by putting the people back in charge i think is like yeah. the, the craziest language like, yeah right like you have to have the right messaging for this bizarre fucking nation (laughs) 
And again, Malice we realize you're probably right that it can't happen here, but we're, we're dreaming we're it up. Okay? Yeah, we're dreaming it up like best case. How could we do that? And the reason that I say that that has to basically, that, that this moment is not the revolutionary moment is because I think that that has to have already been happening for a long time. You have to have an alternative. Yeah, that party has to have built up enough credibility to where when you have the mass of protests about whatever mm -hmm. new crazy bullshit that the, the right future. wing has done, yeah, <laughs> when they do overturn contraception or mm -hmm. or gay marriage or or the general right to privacy at all or whatever, <laughs> whatever the next thing is, when when they get to that point and you get you know millions of people in the streets for that, you have to have somebody. There was the famous. Um, there's a famous moment in the July Days Uprising in mm -hmm. 1917 where the Bolsheviks are standing around giving speeches and stuff and, and some of them are like egging it on and some of them are like reining it in and the, some random uh, worker in, in the streets grabs them by the lapels and says, take power, you son of a bitch. Oh, yes. Uh, and there has to be someone to grab their lapels. Mm -hmm. There has, there to, has be to be someone, support. Yeah, there has, and there has to be a party or an organization you can call it if you want to be like more anarchist mm -hmm. about it. but like there has to be some there sort has of to be a driving force i guess yeah or like a movement or some movement yeah program you, we can be as decentralized as you want you know <laughs> uh, i'm talking in terms of party you know yeah but it could be let's just say if you want more decentralized it could be in let's just say every major city has these like agitators that are out there just just outspoken grassroots movements basically mm -hmm. that do help the community like it's the same thing just more yeah. decentralized like that totally could be it yeah but there just has to be something that people can look toward and see as an alternative I yes think. yeah because otherwise it's going it's just going to crumble into nothing yeah everyone's out there expressing themselves mm -hmm. and not getting something done mm -hmm. so we were talking about this just this weekend and Abby was like, we should go to a protest or something. And I was like, well, what do you want to do? Mm -hmm. if that's a good thing to do if you want to express yourself or mm -hmm. you want to maybe connect with people. I think it's valuable for that. But it's without more attached to it, without a program or a party or some sort of goal, some sort of way to like further action, then I, I, I don't know, it's it's not as, it lacks the potential that it could otherwise have. I think you're right. I, I think in today's context, I think we've lost a lot of what protests used to be, which were just fucking riots. Yeah, well like, and also like kind of <laughs> public threats. the threat of, yeah. of violence, like in the 30s and shit, like they knew, they're like, oh, we're in trouble. <laughs> yeah, this could go bad. Yeah. And now they don't really have that fear anymore. They don't. This is like, look at my cute sign, look at my, look, and I, I think it's still valuable. Like, I'm not trying to shit on protests. What I'm saying is, I think it's a lot more about feeling a little better being surrounded by people who like agree with you on that issue sure yeah i think there's value in that though that's true that builds class consciousness solidarity yeah that sort of a thing the notion of we could really do something with these sorts of numbers i get that mm -hmm. but too many people i think go home from that like yeah look at what we did yeah without actually having done anything yeah i think that's fair I, and again we're not in a position where we can do anything like yeah and we're not saying don't show up like that's you know, uh, yeah i'm not trying to do things like that's good you're doing more than us yeah for fucking sure um i just i just got high and watched tv that that was my action <laughs> <laughs> i think you're right like whatever form it takes whether it's through unions or whether it's through a party or through grassroots neighborhood to you know and so on and so forth organizations we lack the groundwork and we lack the class consciousness. Like we're just not there. Mm -hmm. uh, we got a long road to hoe. <laughs> Maybe it's not so much. Uh, I don't want to level so much a criticism of protesting, mm -hmm. but a criticism of protesting without everything else attached to like, mm -hmm. as we so often say, kind of like do both. Right. So yeah, yeah. show up, talk to people, even regular people who aren't normally like political or something. And, and and get you know kind of build those bonds and build up that belief in your collective capacity i think is what we're talking about right like yeah we look look at how many of us there are 
you know, this in itself is sort of a powerful thing, building confidence, building that belief in your capacity. Uh, but then also like be organizing for the next one. Yes. You know, understand that this isn't probably isn't really it. It could be great. Great. Like that would be That'd sweet be cool. If that I was just it. don't see it. But yeah, like start organizing for the next one. And honestly, like keep doing that cycle because like the next one probably won't be it either like we're so far behind as the left in this country we are that like again i you know may not ever it may not happen till the rest of the dominoes have crumbled and, you know <laughs> i mean honestly but. yeah to get a little downer here like i i don't again it's i think it's easier to picture it all just crumbling away into pure a loose confederation of fascist and non-fascist states mm -hmm. than it is you know the long the longer term goal is seems much further away here's something here's a question mm. just just to play with so i i kind of like i kind of like lennon's take of like engage in the electoral system but just kind of be an asshole oh right? i'd love that so just like push them Show and, and try to get them to tear down things to make it easier for you in the future right yeah. so what are some things that we could try to like as the left like bully the democrats into supporting like in, into doing like we say, oh, then, you know, the left position is do this. And obviously we understand that it's not enough mm -hmm. that we need to just do a revolution, but they think that they can mollify us with these things or mm -hmm. they, they've got to be afraid of us for whatever. Like, for instance, easy pickings, abolish the Supreme Court. That's super easy. I, I can't think of anyone out there who's like, this is a good idea at this point. <laughs> like, they're fucking nine wizards. Well, the entire <laughs> political establishment says it is, you know, mm -hmm. like everyone in mainstream parties or supportive of them yeah yeah i guess that's or true who but... calls himself a proud voter or whatever and yeah i've seen some takes of like oh there's things we can do to fix it like you can add or remove more justices or you can do this or you can impeach judges and i'm like i don't fucking care like it's bad can so we just not could we make that the compromise position of a, just abolish the supreme court well we say abolish the supreme court like i'll vote for you if you abolish the supreme, right. supreme court and if you don't i'm not voting for you the thing is they're not afraid of us they though. don't give a shit I've seen a lot of people who I would label as liberal to progressive folks lose a lot of faith this week. Yeah. Well, I mean, understandable. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just saying they're ripe for the picking. If we get all those people over, mm -hmm. maybe. I mean, that's a significant block. I'm thinking like most people were against this, I would say. Like, yeah, you've got your crate. Okay, let me put it this way. Most people who have traditionally voted Democrat, I would say almost all of them are against this. Yeah. The problem is the structure. Like the Republican Party, they cater to their base mm -hmm. and they attack their center. Mm -hmm. and the Democratic Party does the opposite. Oh, yeah. Even if we were to go out there and be like, we're, you know, we're quote unquote the left of the United States, which what, what even is that? I don't know. Then, and, you know, and we want to abolish the Senate and abolish the Supreme Court. They would just be like, you guys are assholes. We like the centrists, you mm -hmm. know, and they would just dig in. And They'd be like, that's unreasonable. You know what made me really happy for just a fleeting moment? Hmm. I don't know. We were talking about some sort of revolutionary action. I just pictured someone waving the constitution and it's on fire. Like, uh, the sort of like the lady, like the Liberty picture yes. in just, France, uh, just wave some topless it. person. Yeah. <laughs> It's waving a burning constitution, constitution. Out, like the original like it broke in yeah that's oh. a good that's a good ben garrison cartoon idea oh yeah you know that guy he would do that he and say totally this is what the left wants but then oh, we would be I like do. Yes. i do want that you're right <laughs> i want a hot trans person burning the constitution that'd be great uh so yeah cling to that i guess if you need if you need to find your happy place mentally that's mine right now <laughs> yeah it's all far off i think the fundamentals still hold mm -hmm. is that do organizing in terms of unions do organizing in terms of having conversations in terms of and again again the both the immediate goal of making yourself a, a safe place to have these conversations yeah and also the long-term goal of like yeah if you I don't know, this nebulous party, grassroots, whatever idea we have. Right. So personally and then politically mm -hmm. is what we're meaning then, right? Like, yes. so if that's a, if that's a party, great. And honestly, it's probably going to look like, because America, we're, we're just so mixed, so heterogeneous. So it's like, that would have to be like a coalition, a popular front of different leftist groups. Yeah. Because we're all, I mean, like we all got like six people. 
So we need to know, band right? together, right? Um, and put our differences aside to try to do this thing, you know? Like, that would be the only way. Mm. So doing that for the long term, may, like you said, make those personal connections and tap into local networks. Being careful to keep yourself and others safe. Mm-hmm. But tap into those local networks to help people deal with the current legal system and keep working. I mean, we're like I said, we're on this l hopefully not too long term project to save people, to free people, or to provide for them, however you want to look at it. It's going to take a lot of work. Yeah, yeah. I just, I worry. I worry about the timeline, man. It's not looking great, but I, I mean, yeah, I think that's the one piece of of hope that I got this week was the distinct lack of hope that I felt, if that makes sense. Yeah. It's almost a, a sick shot and fraud of like, now you all see. You get it now, don't you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Which like, ideally, like this is a shitty way for someone to have to get to that. Like, obviously I would rather this have not happened. Yeah, but... we, we both do, yeah. Yeah. To bring it back down, <laughs> oh, they, no. they realize right now, but they're going to just come up with new Game strats. Yeah. Yeah. The way we have to fix this is by winning the next election. Mm -hmm. You know, electing the right people. Or how many times have they been proven wrong or shown the evils of, you know, the capitalist oligarchy? And then they turn back, back around and start playing the Let's same game. Vote it out. Yeah. Yeah. I don't yeah. know. But some people, I mean, like the 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 political machines themselves, like that's lost and has been lost for a long time yeah those people are not who we're talking about but like regular people yeah saying. that's what i'm saying okay. is that i've seen a lot of i've seen a lot of liberals turn progressive in the past two years and i think i'm about to see a lot of liberals turn communist in the next couple of years or progressives turn communist or, yeah that's what i meant <laughs> that's a, that's <laughs> they, a they jump. take a leap <laughs> well, I'll, I'll take it but... I'll, oh yeah sure come on in <laughs> uh it's it's possible you know and there's a lot of varieties for you to choose from. Exactly. Like, you know? we could at least get them a socialist. And most of them, most progressives have some of that in there. They have a stripe of it. Mm -hmm. You know, most progressives are for robust social programs. Like, we just got to push them all the way. Yeah, and we can start you on, like, the nice little social democratic program, yeah. democratic socialist, we'll you know. We'll talk about Eugene Debs or whatever. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's, it's great. Easy. We, there's lots of it to choose from. Once you get a little more advanced, we can uh, have you start feeling out whether you're going to be more anarchist or more <laughs> marxist Leninist, you know all that stuff you can figure out later yeah, you don't have you to you don't have to and we just know, have to look at the big picture yeah we're really bad at theory because people will say you have to really be <laughs> correct and like do the right one but we're more like eh, i like some of this i like some of that that's fine eclectic you know nonsense to some people but you can do it too i think that's fine though because it caters to more people yeah and again you don't want to be a very pure party of of three people. Yeah, 14 people, yeah. <laughs> you need, you know, kind of a a big but leftist tent to actually do anything. Yeah. So our point is, come on over. <laughs> come on, join, join the party. That should be your message to people. Come on over. You don't have to tell them you're, that they're coming to like a socialist or a communist camp. Yeah, you just... I Probably think... don't. But that's a brand. We have to have an episode on, on, on the on branding, branding and... All that, because I'm really of the opinion that it's maybe lost to us. Like, we yeah. can never, we'll never know the joy of being a, a member of the ruling American Socialist or American Communist Party, you know? Yeah, you're probably right. <laughs> yeah, it's... Like those books that I was showing yeah. you earlier. <laughs> like, that's what people think. Yeah, that's fair. Now's definitely the time to have some of those conversations start poking at this. Like, I, I was very surprised to, like... Our mother was upset about this because mm -hmm. she's very Catholic. Mm -hmm. But like, these are important conversations to have because you'll be surprised about how many people were not okay with this. Yeah. And especially because, you know, the ruling itself was really bad, but I liked, I liked, I hate it, I guess, but <laughs> it was funny in a terrible, like, of course this would happen sort of way mm -hmm. is that the justices were like, the majority opinion, I think, was like, hey, this is only abortion. And then I think one of the concurring ones was like, yeah, 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 no, no, no. This is definitely only 
abortion. And then and Clarence then Thomas, Thomas is like, actually, no. Yeah. He just, like, admits, hey, those motherfuckers are saying that because it's not, it, like, it could totally be about more than abortion. It Jesus. could be this. It could be this. It could be this. And I think it should be. Like, wow. I think we should get rid of all this. Wow, wow, wow. And just, you know, as they say, saying the quiet part out loud. Yeah, for real. And that just should put us on notice. Like, if you're thinking, for some reason, this is limited and it's or not this doesn't affect apply me, to me. Which is or, crazy. I'm yeah, sure you know more, somebody. Yeah, be more. Yeah, if you got to this point, and you, you can't still be holding that yeah. view. Yeah, I don't know what happened. Yeah. Um, but you know when I guess we're, that's not what we're saying. When you encounter people who mm-hmm. are saying like this doesn't affect me, you know that's one thing you can. Like, Fucking will they're coming for you. Yeah, you can pivot into saying, well, what about privacy? That affects everyone. <laughs> yeah, that's a big you know? one, guys. Um, there are ways that you can talk to people about this to bring them in. I think this is a an opportunity for radicalizing, and again, not to sound opportunist and gross about it, but. It is. But you got to be opportunist. I mean, you, you have They're to take opportunities. opportunities. Yeah, you. It, it's it sucks. It's bad. Yeah. It will hurt people. It will kill people. It will absolutely kill so many people. But it's already been done. It's and been mostly done by black our people, and mostly brown people, like poor yeah. people, all just completely on their shoulders. The oppressed. Yeah. But it's already been done. It's been done by our enemies. Mm-hmm. We hold no guilt for it ourselves, other than the guilt of. The various times that we've all, maybe you haven't, but like compromised and supported the people who let this happen. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's done. We can now use that to make sure to, to, to defeat it, to roll it back. Yeah. You know, yeah. that was the whole thing of Marx's uh, theory was capitalism would dig its own grave. Right. It sure seems like they're doing it. <laughs> it's, 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 it's the question is, is it going to be like a grave that we dig or a grave that we're the ones putting the dirt over or like we're all in the grave yeah they pull us in (laughs) no the question who's in the graveyard (laughs) well let's let's hope to seal them in it oh please in a dark crypt and then later we can all run a nice D &D adventure to go explore Mm. the crypt of capitalism oh that'd be fun like what are these (laughs) what's all this all right well I'm single again this week, so I'm making spaghetti. You know, you know my life. Nice spaghetti rat. Bag life. Spaghetti rat is back in town. I thought you said spaghetti wrap. I was like, I'm not no. interested in that. No, it's a I, spaghetti wrap. No, it sounds terrible. No, I turn into a spaghetti wrap. My husband is out of town. Although, so you wouldn't really call it a wrap, but if you didn't have the wrap bread, instead you had like garlic bread as like a mm. tube of garlic bread with like spaghetti in it oh no and then you like that's not at least it's like foods that work together I not mean, a wrap yeah but like i don't know that's so offensive to me i guess you eat them at the same time anyway it doesn't fucking matter but yeah that's a lot it's like a very mess it's the same amount of mess probably as like a chicken parm sandwich like but with sub. noodles yeah. yeah it's a meatball sub with noodles mm-hmm. that's just i can't that's do stupid noodles. that's not that's some british monstrosity you know like when they put french fries <laughs> uh, on what is it a chippy sandwich chippy bunty is that what it's called no, it's not bunty i'm just trying is it? buddy i think right i don't know let's find out sorry to our british listeners but y'all nasty also oh my gosh i was watching <laughs> this is gonna end this on upper dude i want to i want to try that I, I that sounds so dry you've Sounds never put so french fries on your burger no but but the one they do it just looks completely plain french fries don't they also have sandwich. like a butter sandwich or a bread sandwich chip buddy with, chip but it's with t's b-u-t-t-y yeah right? that's why i was saying bun tea because i was thinking the hard tea okay no i have to call it brits i'm sorry again sorry british people i was watching glow up which is a makeup competition show and mm-hmm they were talking about like working with some brands and these motherfuckers said Nike and Puma. Puma. For Nike and Puma. Puma. Puma is just- That's really good. The, <laughs> the obstinate nature of British people in terms of pronunciation of foreign words is hilarious to me. Yeah, that's It will like, never not be funny to me. It's like when I looked up all those pronunciations on various episodes we've done, If but if I did that and then was like, cool, that's not how I'm going to say I'm gonna it. I'm going to say it my way. Yeah, now I know how not to say it. <laughs> that's what they do. Oh, yeah, a toast sandwich. Which What's is that? Just bread and butter? Bread on either side and then a piece of toast in between. Sorry, what? Yeah. That's nasty. Y'all, how dry are y'all's mouths? Dude, I could probably try that out 
today. I got bread. I have bread, but I'm not going to do that to bread. My good friend, bread. <laughs> it's a texture. Thing. It's probably good. All right. I can't. Listen, British, Sorry, guys. British listeners, chime in and tell us. How wrong we are. Yeah. Tell us, you know, extol to us the virtues of Chip Buddy. I can't get Why down. should we eat it? Why should that Is be a part a of the communist agenda? Huh? Is there a sauce? Like maybe. Chip Buddy? Yeah. No, I don't know. Occasion optionally eaten with condiments such as brown sauce. Again, we gotta talk about that, guys. You can't just call sauce brown sauce. This one sauce. has ketchup on it. Ketchup, mayo, or malt vinegar. I'd fuck with the malt vinegar one. I do mayo too. I would I do probably ketchup. do mayo. I'd do mayo and malt vinegar. I'll be honest, I would just eat this. Dry? Maybe. Maybe it's good. I would that try sounds, it. I'd try I'd, anything once. I'd be so thirsty. <laughs> yeah, you get like a fucking pint. Yeah, right? You know? I need several. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> That was our food corner. Enjoy. Yeah, and a positive way to end this otherwise dreary episode. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, next week we'll be wrapping up our Stalin. What do you call it? It's not a trilogy. I almost said biopic, but it ain't that either. <laughs> you could, <laughs> if our narration is good enough, you can picture the biopic in your mind. I for guess for sure, for sure. But part two of the Stalin bio episode, uh, where we'll cover his time as the top dog. In the Soviet Union. Top dog. Top banana. <laughs> that was the title. Top banana. <laughs> top banana. <laughs> yeah. Whenever you're sad, think about the burning constitution being fucking flaunted. You could be there to see it. You could you be could holding it. it aloft. It's a good feeling. Yeah. We could take turns. But only if you organize, you know? Mm-hmm. Only if you do shit. We could gather... How many pages is that motherfucker? Is it just one big page? The real one? The real one. They have like a copy of that. Like they have multiple, they have a okay, couple. Okay, but I'm saying, I what I'm know. saying is we could divvy up the important documents and so everyone gets something to burn. Oh. Uh, well, there's plenty yeah. of fl- fucking flags to go around, so we can defo do that. Four pages. All right. A parchment. So, you got to be in the central committee <laughs> and be one of the top four coolest members there mm-hmm. to be one of the ones with the... All, or just be like the four people closest to the barricades. I feel yeah, like, probably. Right? <laughs> I would give it to them. Like you did that work. Good yeah. job. Way to so. be tough. <laughs> All right. Um, I guess we'll call it there. Okay. Great. <laughs> See you. Bye. Hey there, comrades. Just jumping in to remind you of all of our social media. We are on Twitter at Teach Communism, Instagram at Teach Me Communism. You can shoot us an email. That's teachmecommunism at gmail.com. Any of those places are good to send us an episode suggestion or a question, anything you think would be useful feedback for us or just your admiration. If you want to admire us in a public manner, and you should, you can go to Apple Podcasts to give us a review. It is the best way to help people find the show. Love when people write and review us. Please do both. We are also on YouTube if that's how you prefer to listen to podcasts, or if you know someone that's the only way they'll listen to podcasts, send them to our page. And we have a Patreon. For five bucks a month, you get access to our notes for each week's episode, including the backlog of notes, which is a very handy resource for up and coming commies. And at the end of the year, all of the funds from Patreon will be given to local mutual aid in the DFW area. So ain't going to line our pockets. Finally, we have merch. Check us out at T Public. You can find shirts and I believe also stickers and magnets and all kinds of fun stuff with catchphrases from the show or episode art, stuff like that. The link to that store is in the show notes, so check that out. Okay, that's all the internet. Join us next time for another episode of Teach Me Communism, where the class struggle is always in session. Bye, y'all.